force majeure, also known as acts of God. Cyclones, floods, earthquakes, storms, volcanoes, and droughts. Then there are man-made calamities, such as wars and their terrible consequences. Desperate Hours examines some of the more noteworthy cataclysmic events of the last 100 years. In this installment, we turn up the heat to examine a natural phenomenon that is both a friend and a foe to humankind. Some two to four thousand years ago, our ancestors had learned how to create and control fire, a step vital to human development. We won't be going back quite that far in this episode, but we do travel back in time to remind ourselves that dangerous and deadly fires are a fact of life, as immutable as the wind, the rain, or the seasons. In Australia, bushfires are an inconvenient fact of life, but now and then they spiral into tragedy on a national scale. The weekend in Australia. It's a time of relaxation that occupies a special place in the Aussie mindset. Off go the work clothes. Shorts and flip-flops take their place. Screw-top wine bottles are liberated and barbecues are fired up. But for people in the state of Victoria, relaxation and certainly barbecues took a back seat when the Black Saturday bushfires began raging on Saturday, February 7, 2009. Everything you've seen in a movie, it's just terrible, absolutely terrible. Couldn't do much really because for safety reasons we just couldn't um, go into, into the bush too long because we've got to worry about our own safety. Oh, there's heaps of devastation, but as far as what's happening now, it's quiet. Indeed, the fires began on a day when several places in Victoria recorded their highest temperatures in 150 years. Since 1859, when the keeping of such records began, Spoken of today as Australia's worst ever bushfire disaster, the fires resulted in the deaths of some 173 people, with over 400 people injured, many of them seriously. Following the horrific events of February 7, 2009 and its repercussions, the day has become known forever as Black Saturday. The people We'll cope. Uh, we've all had our cries and we'll have that for a long time yet. But to lose friends, to lose friends' children, uh, a lot of people are not going to come back. As with any tragedy of this scale, the ray of hope came from the fact that help and assistance came from across the globe. Pemberian bantuan satu juta dolar bagi upaya rekonstruksi dan rehabilitasi utamanya sekolah-sekolah yang terbakar serta pengiriman satu tim identifikasi korban bencana disaster victims identifications dari Mabes Polri Some of the fires are thought to have been started deliberately Prime Minister Kevin Rudd said if arsonists were to blame it amounted to mass murder and anyone perceived as being in any way responsible was in for close scrutiny. Then, as now, however, no matter how bad things get, if you have to face a disaster, it's probably better to do so from the comparative advantage of a first world economy.
Then again, sometimes it's just a case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time, and no amount of privilege or power can protect you. Case in point, the first years of the millennium and a group of party people out to let their hair down to the sounds of Great White. Ring any musical bells? Well, Great White were a hard rock band with big hair that had a hit with Once Bitten, Twice Shy at the tail end of the 1980s. Still performing more than a decade later, they weren't quite drawing the same capacity crowds as in their heyday. Nonetheless, hundreds of people went to see them one Thursday night in Rhode Island at a place called the Station Nightclub. Pyrotechnics were part of the band's act, but they had barely begun their set when stage props went up in flames. Fire alarms went off and over 400 people rushed towards the front exit. Just like a stampede of people. So. Everybody just tried to get out, and they were jumping out the windows and, and out the front door. There were people on fire, and I've got a few friends that we still haven't accounted for yet. Um, it's just a lot of chaos, really. People were hurt and killed. In the rush to flee, the concert goers had panicked, and the narrow hallway that led to the exit became a death trap. The station nightclub burned to the ground in the space of six minutes. 100 people died, and 230 were injured, with only 132 making it out unscathed. And it went up so quick, I've never seen anything like it. I'm, I'm, I just hope to God nobody got hurt. I mean, I know people got hurt, I just hope nobody got killed, because this is too much to you know? There were no sprinklers. He's the only person who has taken any responsibility in this case. If this isn't the case that deserves a serious sentence of misdemeanor manslaughter, what one is? Following the fire, both the club owner and the band manager, 29-year-old Daniel Bichelle, seen here in court, were charged with 100 counts of criminal negligence and manslaughter. This court will therefore sentence you to 15 years at the ACI four years of which to be served by you, with 11 years suspended. This singular tragedy did much to influence fire safety codes in the United States. The club had no sprinkler system, something which could have saved many lives. This was scarcely the first or last time when a little prevention would have been better than any cure or rescue effort. What exactly is fire? Well, fire is most usually the visible result of a chemical reaction between oxygen and fuel of some kind. Gasoline or wood are two examples. Now, wood and gasoline don't just catch fire all by themselves simply because they happen to be surrounded by oxygen in the atmosphere. For fire to occur, the fuel has to be heated until it reaches its ignition temperature. But whatever it is, be it lightning striking a tree or a match lighting the end of a cigar, if sufficient heat is applied to a flammable surface,
then combustion occurs, and there you have it, fire. Of course, fire has many uses, but when it gets out of control, the consequences can be dreadful. Some of the most common causes of household and workplace fires are arson, but there are many other causes, like children literally playing with fire, electrical or lighting equipment that is faulty or misused, firework celebrations that go terribly wrong, candles burning down and setting furniture and fabrics ablaze, household appliances that malfunction, such as air conditioning units and washing machines, and commonly, cigarettes left smoldering in ashtrays. Much of the equipment we think of as standard for fighting fires was invented long ago. For example, the fire hose, made of flexible leather and coupled every 50 feet with brass fittings, first appeared in the 17th century. Yet it remains the standard even to this day in mainland Europe. The one thing that has never changed, of course, is the sense of duty, of valor. However sophisticated the equipment becomes, a firefighter is still expected to go rushing into a burning building as everyone else goes rushing out. Firefighters, whether male or female, and the vast majority are still men, are all required to pull heavy lengths of hose, to scale stairs while carrying giant power tools and lift 35-foot long wooden ladders. All firefighters around the globe would agree on the importance of safety regulations in building codes and in the workplace, as well as fire safety awareness amongst the general public. The job of a firefighter is already tough enough, without carelessness and ignorance making it even more difficult. At least a thousand shoppers were inside the store when the fire began to rampage through the third floor. The store had been holding an American week. One theory is that the fire was started by anti-American demonstrators protesting against American policy in Vietnam. Even after all these years, over 300 people incinerated at once around lunchtime on a shopping day still seems an absolutely shocking loss of life. To this day, it is not clear where the fire began. In the furniture department on the fourth floor, the first floor children's wear department, or with exploding butane canisters in the third floor camping department. Witness accounts vary. In any case, because no fire alarms went off, and nor were there any sprinklers, the alarm was slow to be raised. With just a small number of handheld fire extinguishers available, and the difficulty for firefighters of tackling an inferno in the midst of a maze of crowded streets, the fire spread quickly. How or rather who started the fire is still a matter of conjecture. A so-called American Week at the department store had instigated anti-Vietnam war protests, peaceful ones, it should be noted. But then a survivor claimed to have heard someone shout, I'm giving my life for Vietnam just as the fire broke out. If anyone really knows the truth, they've kept it quiet for a long time. Restored, refurbished, and brimming with opportunities for retail therapy for today's Brussels Boulevard here, the tragedy that took place here now seems a distant memory. As we saw earlier in the case of the station nightclub blaze, playing with pyrotechnics is one thing. Making mistakes with weapons-grade explosives, that's the next level. But that's exactly what happened in Lagos, Nigeria, on a fateful day in January 2002.
The accidental detonation of a large stock of high explosives at a military storage facility in Nigeria's second city had terrible consequences for the civilian population. Fires created by the debris scattered from this explosion tore through a large section of northern Lagos, creating a wave of panic that spread fast. As people fled, many stumbled into a concealed canal and were drowned. I give you up. Francis, boy, oh. oh. Heard about the bomb from this barrack here. So, the first thing that you just saw, you had the sand. Bah! People were just rushing to the place, not until a big guy explosion, and just suddenly your phone, boom, and everybody just started running. Our family are nowhere to be found. We don't have house to lay our heads, we don't have food to eat, and then a very useless. The explosion and its consequences are believed to have killed at least 1,100 people, with many thousands more either injured or left homeless. They died an untimely death, innocently, and they deserve to be buried decently. You can see the bones of my, one of my means of life is in ruins. I don't even know where to start from. I mean, you have to go in there to see the extent of destruction. There's nothing that can be taken out of this place. It's so terrible, my dear brother. The Nigerian government held an official inquiry, which blamed the army for neither maintaining the base properly or in fact decommissioning it as directed to do the previous year. History and tragedy almost repeated themselves in Lagos a dozen years later when there was a fire at the main police armory in July 2014. Fortunately, there were no casualties this time. On the 12th of August, 2015, the entire world was shocked by the news and dramatic footage coming out of Chanjin in northern China. That's when two enormous explosions in the northern port city killed dozens of people, injured hundreds more, and laid waste to large parts of the city, igniting fires that would take firefighters several days to subdue. Like a nuclear explosion was a phrase that would be repeated again and again both by news agencies and from eyewitness accounts. Satellite photos released by the Japan Meteorological Agency revealed that the explosions were so large they were visible from space. The two massive blasts occurred in the warehouse district of Tianjin. One of the blasts was said to be the equivalent of 21 tons of TNT. We 
们看到失火了，看到着火了，就想着能爆炸，知道知道。有大概我们同时有四个人受伤了，我们一起干活的十几个，有四个四个人就受伤了，啊，有的是比较严重，有的是轻伤。Official Chinese media sources claim that the initial blasts took place at a petrol station in the so-named Binhai New Development Zone. There were also claims that the explosions took place at the port city's cargo terminal. For police and firefighters, the initial response was on search and rescue operations, more than putting out the fire, to allow all the chemicals to burn themselves out. This being the age of social media, many people captured jaw-dropping photos and videos of the blaze. As firefighters did their best to battle the smaller fires that broke out around the site, toxic smells were discernible in the air. Chinese authorities were quick to reassure nervous citizens that the air had not been contaminated by the blasts and fires. But there was concern, to put it mildly, that some residences were situated too close to the industrial plant. According to Chinese work safety regulations, chemical warehouses containing potentially hazardous materials are meant to be at least 1,000 meters away from public buildings, roads, and so on. The chemistry explosion ruined the whole area around one kilometer. It was eventually confirmed that there had been several hundred tons of the toxic chemical sodium cyanide on the site at the time of the blasts but the authorities insisted safety regulations had been strictly adhered to. In any case, it took nearly a week before the raging infernos caused by the explosions were under control. By this time, official figures put the death toll at at least 114 people, with dozens still missing. This grim statistic included 64 firefighters and six policemen, the usual frontline casualties in any battle against a disaster of this kind. Unlike earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanoes, fires are something that is within our capacity to prevent, at least for much of the time. There's also wisdom in the old Boy Scout motto, be prepared. For you never know when desperate hours may be ahead.